Hello and welcome to Working With Us podcast. Today we are going to explore Germany, how it is to work with Germans, uh, work in Germany. And with me, I have a German and intercultural expert, trainer. Um, you heard the introduction, Stefan Henkel. Hi, how are you today? I'm fine. Hi, Paul. Nice to see you today. And uh, I'm very excited being on your podcast. Yeah. How, how's your day been? I have a question. You can you can answer this inside of the how your day's been. Uh -huh. Culturally, everybody, not even culturally, in general, when you work, you go for lunch. So how was your typical German lunch today? If oh. any. <laughs> I don't know whether this is typical German. My lunch was uh, actually something quite small as I tried to lose a little bit of weight. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm yeah. on, a, on a sort of a diet right now, um, which is kind of organized and I squeeze it, squeezed it into two, um, uh, between two appointments uh, and just had it on my desk, which is, I would say, not very German. Usually we uh we like going for what like going outside or having lunch somewhere in a in a canteen or in a restaurant and this is what i do when i have people coming a like yesterday a trainer of my company came and we went to a restaurant which was italian which is a very german thing i guess <laughs> to go to uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well i live in italy so so i can tell you all about uh, italian lunch culture which is definitely going out to an italian restaurant uh -huh. uh, but but it's, it's kind of a fascinating thing when you when you uh when you work in different culture that the way you sort of take your lunch breaks right and how you perceive it uh, the way you do i'm just as a context just to give you i'm norwegian so mm -hmm. our lunch for 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 those who know is uh, we bring it from home it's usually a small lunch packet oh, that is mm -hmm. like consists of three slices of bread and then we eat it at our, at our desk in like 15 minutes ah okay so it's, it's a little <laughs> bit different in germany right yeah they, then it was very similar to your uh to your usual norwegian uh lunch um, I guess what most people are doing uh, when they're working in some of the bigger companies, uh, they have a place where within the company where they can go. And then it's usually something like you meet up with colleagues. Uh, that is like a, a game to, with whom I'm going to have lunch today. And it's about networking and get to more get to know more people in the company and so on. So I I, I used to work in a bank just for, for an internship. Uh, a very brief time and there it was really like a, it was like gambling with whom am I going and oh this today with this guy and next time with this colleague and so on so um, this is what I guess most people are doing as I'm in a small company uh, 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 just a self-run company I, I guess this eating uh, lunch uh, in your desk is quite common and is it uh, also because the same is in another in other cultures that lunch is is an important part of the socializing at the workplace uh to get to know people and sort of you know interact with people is it is it more what happens at work than what happens after work when it comes to this thing if you, if you understand uh, my question mm, actually for germans um we we uh we are very formal when it has to be when it's something important or something that we want to know or something that is work related and we need information from somebody then we really tend to not put this into a meeting uh, outside a meeting room um we have this formal meetings uh besprechungen is as, as, as we call it in german and these are the the times where we share information sometimes it's hard for us when we are in other cultures and they share information outside outside of an official meeting to really uh, be serious about the information information we get in these um, informal having a coffee break together or lunch or and so on. So uh, this is quite a typical thing that we 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 tend to divide very strict between a private setting or a non official setting and a formal meeting situation and we tend to be more more serious about the the formal and we yeah. take the information that is coming in there more seriously than uh, outside um these yeah and, and, and lunch obviously is an informal setting so mm, yes yeah 
Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I want to just give uh, the listeners and the viewers a little bit of a, I want to put Germany on the map. I mean, if you don't know where Germany is or you never heard about Germany, um, I mean, it's it's kind of a, a a country that has has put its mark on on the world in for generation. They have a rich history. Um, and just to place it on the map for you that don't know, it's in the central of Europe. It's basically located smack in the middle of Europe. It borders to Denmark in the north. Uh, on the west, you have Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, France, uh, south, it's... Um, uh, Switzerland, Austria, and then you have Czechia and Poland mm -hmm. on the east. I think that's all of it. So you can you can sort of see that Germany has had this, all these influences from all these countries in sort of the long history of even from the Roman days, you know, a sort of a, a rich, a rich cultural history. And um, I, I took some notes here. I just want to see if I can get it up here. So obviously not that I, I'm actually kind of familiar with Germany in, in Norway. We actually learn quite a lot about Germany as an elective forced elective at school. So we had a German or French that we have to learn like for three, four years. Uh -huh. So I, I should remember this, but you know, many years ago since I went to school. So uh, let's see here. So, um, uh, yeah, so Germany has actually more than 83 million people. Uh, which actually makes it the second most populated country in Europe, um, if you consider uh, Russia, which is also in Europe, which is larger. Um, capital is Berlin. Big, other big known cities are Munich, Frankfurt, Hamburg, Cologne, or Köln, so as you call in German, mm -hmm. uh, to mention a few. A few. Um, it's a great power. Uh, one of the well, it is actually the largest economy in Europe. Uh, but probably best known for, or not probably, they are best known for their quality automotive industry with uh, well-known brands such as Mercedes, BMW, Volkswagen, to mention some. Um, and it sort of caught my attention when I did this sort of background now that Germany, with all those influences from around Germany, you have like the French side, which is very distinct on, on one end, and they have sort of the Eastern European Polish side on the on the other end, and I, I I sort of came up with this question, thinking that inside of a culture, there's usually cultural differences that maybe foreign companies or foreigners wouldn't really understand unless you sort of live inside of the country. Because when you read a textbook about German culture, you can read a general sense. Mm -hmm. In your eyes, being German, is there anything? that you can say about this is the people that live close to the French border are different than the people that live close to the Polish border and then Denmark in the north and, and Switzerland in the south or is it something that is, is equal everywhere? <laughs> it's definitely not equal. It's a very interesting question because of course within Germany we, we uh, kind of constantly refer to these differences we have with in, in Germany between the different regions that, that you just mentioned. Um, and we tend to stereotype about that and make fun about the, each other. Like uh, Bavaria, for example, in the south, uh, Southeast is always a little bit different than the rest of Germany. Um, it always have this little tendency of C itself not being totally integrated into, into the country. This is actually already quite a long time that Bavarians feel like that. Um, it used to be the, the second most powerful state uh, when there was still an empire or kingdom and so on. So that was that is coming from that time and it still is like that. Um, and then we have these more, for example, just to be on the more on the culture side, the the southern part of Germany Germany tend to be a little bit more a relationship oriented a uh, little bit more um easy going if you can say this regarding germans <laughs> i mean uh easy going is not the word i would describe germans but within germany the southern part is more easy going than the northern part it's more task oriented there we have i'm from the southern part i'm from bavaria and now living in the southwest so baden württemberg um and when I, I'm visiting clients in northern Germany, it's it's always 
a little bit um, colder there. The, the way people interact with each other are, is a little bit colder. And then Berlin, where people tend to be a little bit harsh, but you don't have to take it too serious. It's just seriously, it's just the way they are speaking. It sounds sometimes a little bit unfriendly, but it's just it's just the way it is. Yeah. It is uh, people talk to each other. Um, and now we're generalizing, of course. Yeah, uh, this uh, has this goes through whole the whole podcast. <laughs> we only generalizing here. Um, and then we have like the Rhine Valley, which where you where you where we have this big carnival going on and so on. So maybe people know about this, um, where people tend to be much more extroverted, outgoing, talking to for to to strangers quite easily in a somewhere when they're in a, in a bar or something um so there are differences within germany and we we tend to make fun of that as well yeah. with each other mm. but it's interesting because it's obviously kind of like the the map of europe is also cultural like the people in the north are known to be a little bit colder you know denmark and, and norway and sweden than the south of italy is more warmer and more relationship based so sort of Germany being in the middle is sort of split in that sense, right? And then maybe, as you said, the the carnival, uh, like the it's in Köln, right? Or mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like that area, which is the same carnival type they have in uh, Spain and and Portugal, and like this kind of you know the warmer atmosphere. So it it's actually very interesting. Do does, do you think that or should like a, a company? that maybe are, are looking to hire Germans have this in the back of their mind or is it general sense that there's like one type of sort of managing the German in the workplace if, if that uh, if there's anything like that hmm, that's an interesting question um phew, I think it's too much generalizing to yeah. look for somebody hiring or oh, we want to have somebody that is very Old, so to say now let's take somebody from hamburg i think that's that's too much putting into these let's say stereotypes that are there within yeah. a country and i guess it's the same in other countries as well people we have these regions in spain or in france and people talk about that and they kind of make a fuss about it but not hiring somebody because he is from this or that part of germany that would be very superficial i guess and uh, yeah. too putting too much into that mm. yeah and I, I think that the 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 thinking from me also is that i just came from a um another podcast i did with with it about italy where mm -hmm. definitely the south of italy is kind of very different than the north of italy in terms of like the people are very you know different and it's sort of if you hire a team of say I don't know from from the south of Italy, uh, salespeople they will actually behave a little bit differently than the p t people, the salespeople from the north of Italy, just mm -hmm. because of culturally they have this sort of uh, dying, uh, the the way they view time, for example, you know uh, these things. It's uh, it, it's actually very different. But I think that because it relates back, it goes over to my next question here, which is that if you could try to sort of ex describe the typical German. In your uh, in your your eyes, what would mm -hmm. you say they are like? What is a from a, a cultural a work cultural point of view? What's a typical German? Mm. Uh, that's I, <laughs> that's actually a very difficult question because of the 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 fact that it's very much generalizing. Um, no, Maybe I just would, for yeah. like a, for someone who for someone who doesn't know the culture, what would they because when they read a, a textbook about the German, they will read something. But if you could explain it to them, what they maybe uh, could expect in, in working with German in terms of their work ethics and behavior and, mm. and all that. Um, I guess uh, some features are that, for example, that we divide quite strictly between private life and professional life. Um, that... Uh, that we tend to not to share too much about our private life in with the colleagues and so on, at least not in the beginning. And usually our friends or the people we spend our free time or spare time with are coming from before 
working somewhere, might be from uh, from university or even school. And these are all like like the best friends. I had a friend uh, who was in uh, uh, from Singapore, and he said, "What people you call friends? This is so strange for me. I'm from Singapore, and we tend to spend as much time together as possible. And you have these people you call the best your best friends, and you meet up like." three or four times a month and then you sitting there with your beer and having a heavy conversation uh something about your how you like or not like your boss and maybe uh your relationship and so on and this is what you call your best friend um so this is this is something that we really share i mean there's a picture that is sometimes used for germans like a coconut um, it's very hard to go inside, but once you're inside, there's the, you get everything. And this is how we treat like our best friends that we trust. They they know almost no, they know every, everything about us. Um, so that and bringing this into the workplace is very unusual. Uh, so um, it might be a little bit different for younger generations or for startups, for example, but when you come to a more traditional company, then then you can really see that that we that we divide between private life and um, and yeah. professional life. Um, yeah, and in in professional life, we I guess we tend to be quite serious and not so much laughter um, and not so not joking around a lot, but being very much focused on the task that is going or the tasks that we have on our table. Um, of course, that is, as we said, that's general speaking, of course, people have fun on work and so on. But maybe in comparison to other cultures, uh, we tend to be quite focused on the tasks that are that are there right now. Yeah. Um, I are there any um, are there any common misconceptions uh, about the Germans or something frustrating that you heard or hear often that is actually not true? That's actually not true. I mean, being not don't have don't having humor is that the right way to put it? Yeah. Uh, that's something that Germans hear quite often, um, or that we are confronted with quite often. Uh, it's not that, that somebody's telling us right into the into the face but it's like a stereotype about germans and i guess this is um this is where this comes from many people see us from in in a work work related situation and there we tend to be a little bit more serious than in a in private life um so this is a misconception that i think most people have in the world i mean that changed a little bit you, you I remember before and after the the soccer uh, world championship when it happened in Germany, and suddenly Germans uh, became more open and and started to talk to people on the street where they people from outside coming here to to watch some some soccer game, um, and that this kind of changed the way people see Germans. There there is something. As a German, when I'm in Italy or in Spain, and people see me staying st staying somewhere and I don't know where to go, there's somebody approaching me and asking, do you need help? And uh, this is quite seldomly done in Germany. It's like we see somebody having a map open and, and trying to find his or her way, and then we tend to I think I'm disturbing him when I when I go approach him and ask him where to go. So we tend to leave him alone, um, which is regarded as a little bit unfriendly. And I can totally understand that. But it's very often it's not because we want to be unfriendly or we don't want to help. It's because we think we disturb them and we enter their private sphere. And maybe they want to figure that out by themselves so they know better the next time so this is all going on in the head when we see something like that and in in the world uh, championship it was a little bit different because people started approaching uh foreigners and go there and ask where can we help you and so on and that changed a little bit the perspective yeah. but what some people say when they when they actually ask germans for help then um 
we tend to be very helpful and even take some effort that is much more than people expect from us to do, like taking you and bringing you where you want to go if you want to find your way somewhere and not just mm-hmm. telling you where to go. So this is this is something that that uh, is described quite often when I talk with if with if you can if I can. If I can take this or on on this this aspect of you know because this is actually very similar to my culture we tend to we we actually call it with freedom comes responsibility so we sort of give everybody mm. it's your time so you take care of yourself and I take care of myself you know mm-hmm. at least in a, in a in a personal uh, private life um, but is this something that also can happen in the workplace if you can imagine a, a, a team of uh, non-germans have say a german manager and if they're stuck at something and maybe they are sort of you know uh, implying that they need some assistance would the germ would a german manager typically just tell them with their eyes you you figure this out yourself or would they actually get involved in in a project I guess I mean implying is always something that we have difficulties to understand. Um, if you say it, then we understand it. We we have a quite direct way of communicating, so um, that means sometimes uh, this directness sounds can sound a little bit harsh. Uh, but on the other way around, we have sometimes difficulties to understand if somebody tries to imply something because we're just listening. We're waiting for somebody telling us what to do, what is the question, and so on. So what is the story, what's going on, and not uh, having to figure that out by what the the, the words that are between the lines. Um, okay. So uh, if somebody, I guess people would first not react, but the moment somebody is asking for help, then most, of course, most people would help. So this is exact, and we it's the same. We, even in school, we were told when you have a if you have a question, then ask. It's not my job as your teacher to figure out whether you understand something or not, or you understood something or not. It's your job as a pupil to ask if you didn't understand something. So this is like going on for the rest of the life. It's your it's your responsibility to ask me and then I help you. If you're not asking, how should I figure out that you have a question? This is like a little bit what I think in most settings this is going to happen. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And then that's also the something that they then from people coming from a culture where they are used to having a sort of a very a strong leader who takes charge a strong leader in that sense that they take the sort of the the reins of everything and they want to sort of be micromanaging in some sense you don't you don't really find micromanaging you find micromanaging i guess in german culture as well but maybe it's not that accepted because uh, mm-hmm. a, 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 right because someone who is actually just want to do their work they want to sort of also be left alone to figure out things by themselves Correct. Give me an objective or an aim where I have to go, but please don't tell me how to go there. This will, uh, it looks like you think I'm stupid and not able to go there. Um, And I come to you if I have questions. Um, That turns the other way around exactly the same as as uh, as a boss or a manager. I expect you to come to me when you, you, when you need my help and not me coming to you and trying to figure out where are you in the process and what's going on. And then I, I give you more hints and what to do. Um, it's your responsibility coming to me. And then I help, that's for sure. Um, so this is, this is a very common, different way of um, managing people in other countries where, where the same thing is in Germany regarded as interfering in something that is not your job at this moment. Whereas in other countries that is seen as taking care of what's going on. And uh, so this is a, the, uh, some a misunderstanding that is happening quite often. Mm. Yeah. And, and just moving on there to sort of, it, it goes perfectly fine into my next question about mm-hmm. like, how do you then, if you are working and I, I work with a lot of clients that actually are hiring um, people in remote settings, you know, so they don't have that opportunity to, to actually meet them in person and see them, so they're managing them, managing them basically uh, via 
you know a laptop and and it, then that can be also for people working and living in germany but like how do you then what sort of the, a good strategy to keep uh, a german worker engaged and happy at them at the workplace mm. if anything can it be related to this or can be related to anything else mm -hmm. uh, what i think is um important to be structured and to to be quite clear of what you want and what you don't want um being some sort in between and unclear situation when it's becoming gray and not black or white this might be something for germans a little bit difficult and uh, we tend to like the structure but yeah i mean that for hierarchy for example there's a difference between scandinavian countries and germany um we tend to to really think this is so cool in scandinavian countries because there's no hierarchy going on there and so on and everything everything is like uh consens oriented and so on and but what i learned from some of our clients that are working in in denmark for example or in sweden or norway that they think it's very attractive to work there but at some point they're trying to figure out okay what's now the decision who is saying what to do now we have all this discussion going on but at the end some person is expected to say okay this is what we do now and and as a german we tend to wait for this person and this this is what we do are going to do now and if this is not happening we tend to be lost a little bit okay and this is demotivating of course yeah. so i guess in a remote workplace we tend to be quite motivated just by the task um not so much by something that is coming from outside the task itself is already something that we like to figure out um but and that can lead quite some time being alone and working even remote and there's no direct contact but of course maybe this is a very human thing that at some point we need to have interaction and need to what's going on and what is the broader objective and where to go and so on so by doing this giving structure and being very clear uh this i guess this is uh, a motivating and good thing for us to do work like yeah. that mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it really ties into a lot of the new research coming out um, of, of effective remote teams as well, is to have planning, structure, and if you want to sort of, because otherwise you're just stuck in meetings all day, and it's really hard to chase people when they're on the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you not have, if you haven't planned uh, sort of the objectives ahead of time and the tasks are ready, and then you can sort of, the, the, the work or the person can just engage in that in their own time and and that will sort of be more motivating than just having to sit and wait for a meeting to get the instructions there every day right <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh okay. yeah cool. yeah it's a little bit like having this a meeting where we get to know what to do and where we can actually discuss stuff it's not just listening to somebody telling us what to do but we we like to discuss about the stuff and then getting a, uh, and then this is the direction we are going to from the boss. And then we need some time being alone and doing what we actually agreed on before. And then there's a meeting again with milestones and this is, our these will be the next steps. And then again, having some time alone where we can work on the stuff that we just agreed on. And I guess this mixture is something that helps a lot to keep Germans engaged. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It, uh, it. Um, I think it's absolutely true, and I think it, to to summarize that 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 point is yes, structure and organization. It sort of it sort of brings it back to what you said at the beginning about the typical German. You know, they like some sort of structure and mm -hmm. and to sort of be left uh, it, to do their job the way they've been told, and not you know come and tell me how to do the job. I will get it done. Trust me. Um, <laughs> And uh, and I think that you know for, for for people from from very opposite culture that could be a challenge uh, if they don't know about this. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, and uh, if they have the yeah. tendency to just pick up the phone or 
hey, I have a question regarding this. This can be regarded as a being disturbed and what, I, what is actually my task to do right now. So we just yep. talked about it. There was a meeting. So why are you calling me right now? Now is time to work on what we agreed on. And in the next meeting, we can have the discussion again. But yeah, of course, it's not just one time calling and people start getting angry. It's just something if this happened constantly and I have the feeling I'm interrupted in my tasks. We're not a multitasking. I think most of us are not really into multitasking. Of course, it's also a generational thing. I mean, you know, younger generation, what they do at the same time right now, um, like uh, social media and this and this and that. Yeah. Um, but in general speaking, I would say we are less multitasking than other cultures. Yeah. Well, that's that's a ex excellent, excellent um, points here and um, very helpful. I think it, it's a good it's a good way of presenting it in that way. Um, I want to do a little piv pivot. Um, uh, and and go to to something that is 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 true for most people that actually enter the workplace and that's sort of the the outlook of and I was thinking also in in typical sense uh, the German their their outlook on work life balance career say they they go to school they go to university they start working um, is there anything that is in your experience like I, just to, to give you an example for example in, in, in a Norwegian culture mm -hmm. to, to put the context a little bit is like we we tend to you know we we study we go straight to university so we are finished there when we're like 23 24 then you start working this is very typical then you work your way up you sort of try to go the career ladder um and then you you retire when you're like 63 or something um and work-life balance you know is all about getting as much freedom as possible but still doing the work so a lot of uh, outdoor activities, family is important, everything outside of work. How How is it for, for the typical German in that sense? Hmm. I guess um, work-life balance is, a, is a, a, a topic here like for a couple of years already um, and as far as I know that the for the even the younger generation now coming out of university, it's even more important uh, than for my or older generations uh, that we think about that and we try to structure our life that we have a balance between work and life. For me personally, this question is a little bit difficult because being an entrepreneur, I don't really make a difference between private and professional life of course I make a difference but there is no work-life balance my work is not stopping when I have life and my life is not stopping when I'm in work it's it's very if you ask me for my hobby it's my company uh, or one of my hobbies so um, but in general I would say it's something that is regarded as we want to have free time and we want to organize our free time I, I, there's a, a um, something that we we treat um, appointments, private appointments, in the same way like we treat professional appointments. It's a something in my Outlook calendar where it says meeting with this friend and having some beer. It's like very, very like I would like we have a podcast together now. It's on my Outlook calendar the same like my my pri I organize my private life in the same way, which seems to be different in other cultures um more more free free floating there um but when when you ask is it a little bit more free time than or more money i guess there are still quite some people some more people asking for more money and even on risking having less spare time but yeah. this is maybe my generation and the younger is is there totally different that's at least what i can re read in newspapers um if, yeah if i take it like if if i put it into an example say that um, uh, a company from the us you know they have a, maybe a uh a, culturally their work is maybe okay you work nine to nine like 12 hour work days so they're going to expand into germany they're going to hire a team from germany can they expect them to sort of be 
how should they expect sort of the German to, to shape, like if they go set up a, a work day for a German team, mm -hmm. uh, what would say a German say, oh, I need this because that's everything else. Or would they be adaptable to, you know, following someone else's cultural um, work practices? Yeah. Do you have an example? What would be a different work press? Work press uh, yeah. Well, practice? Italy is. Uh, it, Italy is uh, for some. Uh, Italy doesn't really hire. You know, people. Uh, not many Italian companies do hire uh, remote workers at, at this moment. But a, a general sense uh, here, they start their work at nine and they end at six, seven, mm -hmm. and then it's sort of out for a. You know, maybe a an aperitivo, which is called here, like a, a, with some friends, and then it's home. That's mm -hmm. one example. And if you, as an Italian company, were to hire someone, maybe you would put that expectation as well. But maybe to say, like, okay, work, your work day doesn't end after eight hours. It ends when you're finished with working. Ooh, I guess um, that, that's very interesting because it also leads to some misperception. Um, when Germans are outside and, and living in a, in a being like, for an as an expat or an, on an international assignment sometimes they're alone without their family and so on then they tend to work quite a lot because just they don't have their structure there are no friends uh, at least in the beginning and the beginning is quite some months usually until you gain new friends and so on so that gives the perception of being quite um uh busy and like to work a lot what people from outside germany say when they come to germany that they actually astonished how much germans tend to we have the nine to five work time and when it's five we just stop working um and i guess this is for most germans true that that they five it can be five ten that's okay or five thirty but don't expect me to work much longer than that and even not being reimbursed for that. Of course, it also has to do with the, when you're in, the, in a consultancy firm or something or lawyer, then then it might look a little bit different. But in, in other contexts, it is expected to be there from nine to five or nine to six. And that's that's it. Don't expect me to yeah. be there longer than than we have in our contract. Yeah, and then it's also true. I think that that uh, in Germany you are you are trying to protect the workers from uh, I don't know what you call it, but say exploitative uh, companies. Like I think that you have a rule about uh, you can sort of implement a rule: no emails on the weekends. And I mm -hmm. heard these examples and stuff like that, right? So yeah, uh, and I think just because if if a listener is is from the outside of Germany looking into this, they have to be aware of these kind of things that is sort of maybe. It's not ingrained in the culture in that sense, but it's sort of part of, you know, the dynamics in the culture. Uh, and then maybe a young German coming into the market. Yeah, you know, sort of sure. had these expectations. Mm -hmm. When you're in a, in a, that's also something that dividing private life and, and professional life and interfe having this interfered to each other and, and like on the we weekend acting like I'm working or it's, it's, a little bit frowned upon and it's not like there are some jobs of course where this has to happen and we tend to look with them oh yes i'm sorry that you have to work like this and you have to work on on your weekend or something so it's uh, weekend is is very important for us for example yeah yeah no it should be i mean it's, it's i think <laughs> yeah. in in general sense it's you you should have the um Everybody should have their freedom. Also, mm. life is not only work. Um, right. Unless you're an entrepreneur, like some of us are here, you know, like <laughs> what, what is freedom? What is work? What is personal life? You know, yeah. so <laughs> we organize our days a little bit differently. Okay. Um, um, so let's, we have sort of put, I think, a pretty good sort of understanding of general sense, you know, the Germans in, in the workplace and say that someone comes now from maybe they talk to you about this or they talk to me and I say okay I would like to hire someone from Germany mm -hmm. why should I do so why should I hire someone from Germany I would say you have somebody who's quite efficient 
working. I mean, when I compare myself with other Germans, I tend to be not so organized and sufficient. When, but when I work in an international team, suddenly I'm the organized one. Um, so, of course, culture is always relative, uh, and therefore this happens as well. Um, so, I guess you have somebody quite organized and, and uh, efficient, um, somebody who is serious about the work that he or she is doing. Um, it's not just fun, it's something that we take very seriously, our, our job, and we define ourselves quite a lot about what we are doing for our living. Mm. Of course, it will be somebody quite good um, uh, educated. So if you hire an engineer, it will be a good engineer. That's what I think is something that you can get from a German. Mm, um, uh, the you have somebody that gives you feedback quite direct. If you want to know something, what do you think about my next idea about this task or about that? Um, you will have somebody who is who is giving you feedback on that, even if you don't like it. Um, yeah, I guess these are some of the features you get when you when you yeah, work yeah. with a German. <laughs> and, and I think it's. Uh... I, I I don't remember the entire context, but there's a very funny meme or like a drawing online where you, they say like the 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 in in heaven the chef is uh, Italian and then <laughs> yeah. the German is an engineer or something, you know, and then the uh -huh. opposite in hell, uh, the the chef is British or something. Sorry, I don't want to offend anyone, so I don't want to say it, but you know, it's I think it's true what you said, right? I think that stereotype, that sort of a that sort of the organized mindset and the structure, like definitely for engineers, I think it's very true. And you can also see that in in everything that sort of Germany has, has brought along through history in terms of technology and, and uh, the automotive industry and the reliability in, in, in cars and stuff. You know, that's definitely, a, a, I think it's something that is ingrained in in sort of the, from, from your birth growing up, you have this mentality. And um, so I, I I I, I I totally get what you're saying there. It's difficult to generalize, and this is sort of mm -hmm. like you know you have to tell tell a good story about yourself, <laughs> which is also difficult. Like brag about yourself, which may be also difficult <laughs> for German to just tell you something. <laughs> that, why should you hire me? You ask for you ask for the features. Of course, there are some some stuff that might not. It's not fun. <laughs> At least I have to say, working with a German, you don't hire a German because you want to have a fun environment. Um, so there are some things that are can be seen as negative, of course, as well. And as you said, of course, it's generalization what we're doing here right now. Um, but I mean, there is a, a generalization. Is there is something that makes it true, and something that makes what makes that makes it not true? And uh, um, you have to. It, when we do intercultural training, it's always we give people a stereotype and then we have to take it away right away again because you're not working with a German, you're working with Steffen. And you have to figure out how, the ways Steffen is doing stuff, of course, at the end. Um, but still, the stereotype about Germans can help you to understand some of the stuff he's doing or even anticipate how he might react on something that you are doing. So um, that's, that's, but I, as we are not computers um, that are only can think in zero or one, um, we know that there's a gray, there are gray areas and so on. I think we can figure this out quite, quite good. And yeah. And yeah. Yeah. It's, and I think it's also an interesting point that I had in another conversation is that because we are getting more and more globalized with technology and we are sort of merging together you know different cultures and everything so maybe these differences were, were much more visible like say 50 years ago or like the, a different generation where you haven't really seen the world and travel because my my I know a lot of I have a lot of German friends I've been, I've been studying and living abroad for many years and they are one of the most sort of you know um international people i know they speak good english they have a good sense of uh, 
uh, res- sense and respect of other cultures. You know, they integrate well. They do all of these things, and it's sort of it's very easy to get friendly with them, mm-hmm. um, to make friends with them. So, uh, but that's a generation maybe that was different. You know, maybe as you said, the World Cup um, when that happened, you sort of the generation before that might have been differently. So. Mm. Um, if that makes any sense what i'm saying yeah. yeah i i mean the the there is some that then um some conduct of behavior that is becoming more and more similar all around the globe and of course then you have these different like let's say a farmer in india might share some features with a farmer in germany or in norway more than an engineer in india is is sharing with an engine uh, with a farmer in India. So that these layers are, are there as well. Um, but what I think is that when you go deeper and not just to the to the to the to the surface, then the cultural features remain very for a long time um, and changing uh, very slowly. And therefore, I still think and and even. That's the st- strange thing uh, that we have the tendency when something from the outside is coming that we even um, go back a little bit more and emphasize more what we think is our identity. So um, having our identity is questioned leads to um, defending this identity a little bit more, which which is actually then leading in the opposite direction than the common conduct worldwide. So that it is, it, it, I think it will remain, um, it will remain a, a topic for, for, for quite some while. I mean, yeah. you, you asked in the beginning about are there differences within Germany? So it, I guess there will always remain these different, and they make, they are actually the salt in the salt in the soup. Do you say that? In English, and that's what we say in German. So no. that the good thing yeah. about living together, it makes it gives us it, it's some spice in in the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I think uh, I do this often when I if I speak to 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 companies that want to go globally with their company, and I say that the, at least the, the what the first thing you should do is to do you know your own identity? Mm. Are you aware of how you? behave in you know meetings and expectations and everything and do you know where that is coming from for example i think that sometimes that's also super interesting to for them to understand because that's sort of the that's what your training i guess also companies are doing like there will be um conflicts based Mm -hmm. on that you don't see how you are reacting to a different culture uh, just because that it's easy to sort of defend your own identity and say the way i'm doing stuff has always been the best so why should that those do the same, even though those are completely raised in a different kind of society and, and, and environment. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, anyways, I don't really have, I had one more thing. Um, and I don't know if you have anything else you want to add before the sort of the last uh, point I have anything. You, do you have any good uh, stories in mind about maybe a, a cultural conflict that that happened with some foreign company working with germans or something that you have experienced in your own life oh that's a, a good, that's a good question of course we have um from my from my job quite some some stories going on for example <laughs> now i have to think about something i mean one thing that i want to share is is um that i find very interesting um, you said in the beginning, like uh, Germany, in between all the other European countries, and um, there is one one scholar. She she tried to find ways to explain some cultural features, like for example, this this very structured way and sticking very much to rules is something that I guess Germans do a lot as well in comparison to many others that we that we tend to look for rules and then we stick to the rules. And the question, why is that this way? And um, that, you know, Germany, uh, there was a time when Germany was totally divided into different little states and it were like more than 3,000 
uh, states within the area that is now Germany. And that when you go to the market, like just a, a couple of kilometers away from where you live, it might be in a different territory. And there's a different, there are different rules. So you need to know the rules. You need to know the rule in your territory and you need to know the rule in the territory where you go to the market and maybe you go somewhere else as well. And then there are another set of rules like uh, what, what kind of currency you're using and so on and so on. And this leads to Germans being so, so obeying to rules because they, they need it in some former times to know about the rules. Otherwise you might have to go to prison because you're just not, taking care of a rule of another territory. And this is one of the explanations why, and I find these, these explanations very interesting and, and sometimes, ah, now I can understand why. Same with uh, why, do, why, why we divide private and, and, um, private and professional life, that there was a time when this was absolutely necessary. Otherwise you, you I mean, and it, was a couple of hundred years in Germany, or let's say maybe, maybe 150 years uh, from when when the absolutism was striking back and, uh, and then uh, the Third Reich and so on. And in all these times, it was very important to not tell everybody outside what is going on in your private life. It can be quite dangerous. So this is just some of the explanations and I, I find them very interesting. Yeah, and, and, and it would be... Uh... If, if I'm thinking about sort of the uh, generations of people raised in, in this kind of divide, right? But after, say, the unification, that's sort of like now Germany is one big, you know, unified country. It's the same the same concept and idea is actually true in Italy in many ways, where they were used to be up until 1861 mm -hmm. divided into different like kingdoms. Mm -hmm. And it still sort of sticks with a lot of, uh, even languages are different, you know, around there. So... So, so I think that that's what we also mentioned a little bit, you know, there's there now a, a new generation that comes up and maybe they are raised in, even the parents' mm. generation is from within the sort of when everything was sort of unified again. Mm -hmm. So um, Yeah, and we, we don't know where this is the next generation and uh, something like uh, the pandemic situation, how this is changing a culture of, and we can only see this i guess in a couple of years and see how the whether it changed something or not no. and yeah it's it's still an ongoing process of course it is i mean it was for yeah, the last yeah. couple of hundred years so it will still be the same yeah yeah and i think it's also we we didn't touch upon that uh, we could have this discussion in itself as a topic you know immigration changes stuff as well you know like a different uh cultures comes from the outside in they settle down and and sort of they shape the culture around them and that's another generation that grows up with you know their uh, way of living and their way of working and feeling and and thinking and mm -hmm. uh being in the middle of europe you have like imp impacts from everywhere all the time and uh and uh, that's something um it, it's super interesting and i think uh to, to the learning you can take from all of this is that uh, uh, culture as you said is, is always going to be ingrained in you because it's sort of you know uh, it has something to do with your identity but it's also fluid a uh, mm -hmm. generational thing it will sort of change as we go forward mm -hmm. yeah uh, uh, sorry if i can ask you a question how was it for yes. you being a norwegian and living in italy uh, did you did you uh, can you re remember something where you said wow there is a cultural difference for me and it's not so oh. <laughs> easy to adapt or something yeah well i have many because i actually uh i lived uh, in portugal before italy mm -hmm. uh and then one of the things that is uh, i think you can also relate to this uh, because this is something i think we have very common in our culture is the organization of stuff and structure and you know um call it engineering of a problem like for the way you fix a problem in mm -hmm. in the culture i'm living in now everything is fluid it's sort mm -hmm. of like okay you have a problem i will look at it and i will see if i can fix it and if i can't fix it i will see maybe tomorrow maybe tomorrow instead mm -hmm. of like for example we uh just recently we are doing a refurbishment project here you know and i'm nervous i was a little bit nervous going into this because if you do something like this in norway buy a house it's a very structured way of looking at 
you need this kind of paperwork you need this kind of thing you need mm-hmm. everything is very structured you have someone come in and look at the house look at the walls make mm-hmm. sure everything is fine in italy it was a little bit like maybe maybe not you know that someone will come there there are rules there are somewhere in the system but it's such a it's kind of like an um it's organized disorganized i don't know how to explain it it mm-hmm. it, it works but it doesn't work the way i my brain would want it to work mm-hmm. <laughs> sort of like the things takes a little bit longer it gets done in the end and the way to get there it's it's just um uh that's sort of the thing that at least when i came to portugal uh, it was 2014 i had lived, lived abroad before that but in more like uh, uh anglo-saxon cultures and all that but you know i came there and i remember i was at checkout at, at the supermarket and i had one item By the time I came to the counter to pay, I basically had to stand behind the lady for five minutes, listening to her conversation with the cashier. And they didn't <laughs> look at me. It was because that's, you know, they had take their time. Time is looked at differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, funnily enough, uh, like some months later, I went to Lidl mm-hmm. in Portugal, completely yeah. different because they are trained in the German <laughs> way of efficiency. <laughs> so there they basically like sort of threw me through the counter and I was like shocked. <laughs> so, yeah. Great story. Thank you for sharing. Great. No, no, I have I have a lot of these experiences, obviously not in a work setting, but in, in personal settings. Uh it, it's it's it it is the things that you sort of appreciate also when you leave abroad. You you sort of you see inside to your own culture mm-hmm. and you sort of see what is working and not working, and I appreciate. Uh, more uh, what was the good parts of of growing up and and living there and uh, maybe things that the people um, is is something I don't understand why they why they could, should complain about. But there's much more things to worry about. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I mean, it's expanding your your. It's so much out outside the comfort zone in the beginning, but it's actually expanding your alternatives of doing stuff and that's that's a wonderful thing to to learn yeah hmm. and i think that that's we can sort of wrap it up on, on that note because the, the last question i would have to you is that if you were to recommend um someone to to learn more about what it, how it is to work with germans or work in germany um and if they're not there at the moment which is mostly the the, the case with most of the people I work with, you know, they are looking at either moving in there or hiring remotely or something. Is there any any tips you have for them or mm-hmm. resources you would guide them to? Um, you can guide them to yourself, of course. Yeah, of course. I mean, I would always recommend doing a cross-cultural training or at least some e-learning or trying to make this topic as something that you want to learn about it's it's um i mean not everybody has the chance to really do a cross-cultural training um but at least not regarding the the learning about the culture as a nice uh add-on that can be also left out this will lead to a miserable time i'm i'm sure if you if you don't if you're not open to oh there are cultural differences and it's not of course you can judge about them and say i don't feel well with that but it is important to see this as a cultural feature or cultural trait or or, or some cultural background and it makes no sense to fight against this all the time it makes much more sense to learn about it and try to integrate it and and live with that and find your way to deal with that so and to do so you need to learn something about it um even uh so that we it's always a a different culture working in a different cultural environment can be something like there is something different, but I cannot put my finger on it. What is going on? I don't feel totally integrated. What is going on here? And the moment you get the knowledge to reflect on that, oh, there's task orientation, there's relationship orientation, there's different ways of dealing with hierarchy, there's different ways of finding a, a common ground and so on. And the moment you know these words, you can start reflecting on them. And therefore, I would everybody um, recommend to 
take care of that and learn something about that. Um, of course, making friends wherever you go, trying to, to make friends where you are. And it's not easy in German. Be patient with that. Um, be, because the whole time, the whole day is so structured and there are plans for from, I don't know, uh, eight in the morning until nine, ten in the evening, whether you meet friends or whatever, there we have this qu quite many people are in, in um, playing soccer or being in some sort of a club or I don't know, Vereinsleben, this is how we call it. Uh, and And to bring somebody, to make somebody like you so much that he or she is actually clearing his evening so that you can meet up is something that takes time but when when you have this then you have somebody you can always ask what is going on here and especially this is quite easy with germans as we we tend to talk about stuff quite a lot and not being too shy about asking something that in other cultures might be a, a taboo or not not being able to ask about because uh, you 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 don't want to imply something. Germans tend to be quite frank about this kind of stuff. So um, getting to know people and taking the time and being patient enough, but then it can be quite some, then you might have a friend for life. So this would be some of my recommendations. <laughs> yeah, and I, I can say I have some of my really best friends are German. Uh, I didn't meet them in Germany. I met them abroad. So maybe that's a different mm -hmm. breed of people. Mm -hmm. But uh, they are very easy going when you get to know them. I must say when you get to know them, when they really get your friends, they are like uh, very reliable, uh, always open for new fun and activities. And you can if you're active, there's always sports involved and Oh. uh travel and yeah so it, uh, it's uh i i think it's just uh, and I, there's a lot of communities around the world as well with with a lot of germans like students and and i think that if you really want to sort of if you're in a if you're in a foreign country and you really want to and if your ambitions is to go there maybe as an engineer or whatever ambitions you have you know you always you can seek them out probably anywhere in the world in some sense some community you can mm. get to know them a little bit and just That's you know true. have a chat with them see how it goes <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. Well, um, thank you very much, Stefan. So, if uh, anyone wants to get in touch with you, do you? How do you recommend them to reach out to you? Um, you can uh, write me an email. Do you? Do you have something like uh, notes uh, and your where where people can? Yeah, uh, I will and... add uh, all the links and uh, the, the, uh, emails and uh, you know whatever you want me to share. I will add in the show notes of this episode that you find on the website. So. Uh, um if someone list is there any preferred platform do you have the email linkedin mm -hmm. so for me it's two it's basically email stefan.henkel at crossculture-academy.com um or my linkedin profile which is just stefan henkel and then you will find me and uh i'm i'm really happy to get some to get some messages great mm -hmm. perfect well, thank you very much, Stefan. It was a pleasure. I, I, I mean, it's. Uh, it, I always love to to listen to someone from a culture speak about themselves, and you know, for me, it's it's all about listening to, yeah, generalization, stereotypical things, because you know, in the end, that's what we that's what we are. We are. We have an identity, and we 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 should be able to share that with the world. And uh, people can, as you said earlier, judge for themselves when they're there but yeah know that i think it's it's a very very valuable for me um sort of confirms a lot of the things that uh that i know uh about about germans and uh hopefully the listeners and and who else is sort of tuning into this can get some value out of this and uh yeah hope you still have a good day there thank you very much yeah. paul and thank you for approaching me i, I was it's my pleasure to be on your podcast thanks Thank you, Stefan. And uh, thank you all. If you want to know more, you can find everything on the website. It's uh, workingwithus.co. Uh, you will find the show notes, uh, details, some links, everything that we have discussed, uh, even the transcript of the entire conversation. And um, yeah, hope to hear from you soon. Bye-bye.